happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome to tonight's Bible study. Uh, Pastor Jeff uh, is away this week, which is why you see me. You've probably figured out by this time that I'm not Pastor Jeff. Um, Pastor Jeff is away, like I said, and he asked me if I'd fill in for him for this week's Bible study. When he asked if I'd take this week's Bible study, he said he wanted me to focus on evangelism because that's where we're headed as a congregation. We know the principal text on what we know as evangelism comes from Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. And all the Bible verses that I'll be reading tonight will be from the New International Version. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. This is commonly referred to, and we all know it, as the Great Commission. Now, I wondered if I could link the study of the Old Testament because we believe God's Word is consistent from Genesis to Revelation. The entirety of the Bible is consistent in what God's saying. The apostles were all familiar with the Old Testament, that is, the scripture they had available to them, and they referred to scripture to prove who Christ is and how we are to follow him. So it seems to me we can do the same thing in looking at evangelism. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, probably this seems odd at first, at least it did to me, especially considering the definition of evangelism, which according to the dictionary is the spreading of the Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness. You may be wondering how the Old Testament can speak to evangelism when Christ is not directly named in it. And if it does, how can we investigate that? To do this, I'd like to use a feature which is standard in most copies of the Bible, which is cross-references. I don't know how many of you have actually ever used them before, but they're quite handy. Now, Dr. Ray Pritz, who's the Executive Secretary of the Bible Society of Israel, descri describes cross-references as follows, and I quote, A cross-reference is a note placed alongside the biblical text which directs the reader to another place in the Bible where he can find the same thing or something similar. It gives only book, chapter, and verse without any comment. It may be listed in the margin at the foot of the page, or in the body of the text after the verse. Cross-references let the Bible speak for itself. Many subjects are repeated frequently in the scriptures. By using cross-references, the reader can follow the biblical treatment of a subject without extra commentary. Additionally, he can grow in the discipline of inductive study, that is, deriving the Bible teaching on a subject by looking at the total of what the Bible has to say on that subject in many places, end quote. So, by reading the cross-references for each verse of a passage, we can get a deeper, more complete understanding of what the text is saying to us. But first, a disclaimer, I usually read the Bible online at a site called uh, BibleHub.com because of the link tools and commentaries that are available there. They're very convenient to use. It, starts off with parallel uh, versions of the particular verse. It'll have cross-references, different words in that verse, where else they're used in Scripture. It'll have uh, links to the original Hebrew or Greek, depending on whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, uh, and a concordance telling us what those words mean. And it also has commentaries at the end. And there's other tools that are available too, but those ones that I just described are available on one page, so it just makes it really, really, really convenient. So uh, I use BibleHub.com, and I like it, and I'd recommend you use it if you want to. The cross-references there, and this is the disclaimer, the cross-references that are there may be different from what's in your Bible, but don't be discouraged by that. Follow the what listed ones in your Bible if they're different, and you'll most likely find that the message is the same, Remember, we believe God's Word is consistent from Genesis to Revelation, the entirety of Scripture. 
I will be focusing on the Old Testament references for tonight's study. And you can take a look at the New Testament ones later as well, and they do help to nail things down for you. But let's take a look at our passage and see what more we can uncover. First, uh, we'll start in verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. There are three Old Testament cross-references for this verse. There are Proverbs 8.15, Isaiah 9.6, and Daniel 7.13. Let's take a look at each one of those in turn. Proverbs 8.15, uh, again, New, New International Version. If I didn't mention it, all the Bible passages are going to be from the New International Version tonight. Proverbs 8.15 says, By me kings reign, and rulers issue decrees that are just. Okay, now that does demonstrate authority, but it seems a little incomplete to me. Remember, Pastor Jeff often speaks of the importance of looking at verses in context. This verse is in the middle of Proverbs 8, which is subtitled, subtitled Wisdom's Call. It's a chapter about wisdom. If you read this chapter, and I hope you do, you'll find it's a beautiful discussion of God's wisdom and that wisdom is from God. This reference is not a description of Jesus. Rather, it points to the words he is saying, that they are wise. Since his audience was very familiar with the Old Testament scriptures, I'm sure this was not lost on them. Let's take a look at the context around Proverbs 8.15. I'll start with uh, verse 12 and go down to verse 21. Proverbs 8.12. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have insight. I have power. By me, kings reign, and rulers issue decrees that are just. By me, princes govern, and nobles, all who rule on the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice, bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and making their treasuries full. So that's Proverbs chapter 8, uh, verses 12 through 21. That's the context around the cross-reference. It's not just that by wisdom, kings reign. It's all the benefits of wisdom. And these are the benefits of Jesus' word. Anyhow, you can take a look at that, uh, and you may come to some different conclusions. Lord knows we're all made differently. Uh, that's one of the great things about coming together and discussing these things with your fellow Christians and fellowship and Bible studies is that you can get points of view that don't naturally occur to you from other people. So, there's that. Okay, so uh, the next one is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is a very familiar passage, which we read every Christmas. This passage does describe Jesus. The context for the reference goes from verse 1 to verse 7 of Isaiah 9. And again, it points to Jesus' authority. Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. Isaiah 9, verses 1 through 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future he will honor Galilee of the nations, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as the people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when, dis when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. 
Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. So that describes a lot about Jesus and a lot about his authority. The, the next cross-reference for uh, Matthew 28, 18 is Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, a coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. So from those cross-references, what I see is that where Proverbs 8 speaks to Jesus' wisdom and authority, Isaiah 9, his incarnation and authority, Daniel 7 points to his future return and authority. Because if you read Daniel chapter 7, and I recommend you do, uh, it's a prophetic book. It talks about the second coming. Or, as John records Jesus' words in Revelation twenty-two thirteen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. There can be no doubt from these verses that Jesus is the promised Messiah, speaks wise words of power, and will return in power to judge the world. So those are the cross-references for Matthew 28, 18. Um, that's the preamble to the Great Commission. Verse 19 goes on of the Great Commission goes on to say, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In my Bible, on BibleHub.com, there were no cross-references listed for this verse. And I get that, because this is the command that Jesus is giving us. This is what he is telling us to do. It's not based on He's not quoting or pointing to the Old Testament. He is saying he already did that in verse 18. In verse 19, he's saying, this is what you are to do. Now go, therefore, go and make disciples. Remember, when you see a therefore, you have to, have to ask what it's there for. The, verse 18 establishes his authority. Because he has the authority, therefore, go. I have the authority to make this pronouncement, to give you this command, therefore go. So I understand why there would not be any cross-references listed for that, because this is a new command which he gives us. Now on verse 20, uh, verse 20 says, And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. All right, so in this one, we've got one cross-reference, Jeremiah 26, verse 2. And it says, this is what the Lord says, Stand in the courtyard of the Lord's house and speak to all the people of the towns of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Tell them everything I command you. Do not omit a word. Okay, that's pretty powerful. That's quite powerful. Uh... And he's pointing back, again, to a message he gave to the prophet Jeremiah. How does that tie in here? Verse 20 says, And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Jeremiah 26, 2 says, Stand in the courtyard of the Lord's house and speak to all the people of the towns of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Tell them everything I command you. Do not omit a word. No, there's a couple things that pop up into my mind there. Uh, verse 20 says, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, which means by turn he has commanded those believers that come on board after the fact. But let's take a look at Jeremiah 26 uh, a little bit more closely. I believe it's verses 2 to 6 uh, that um, 
are the context around this verse. This is what the Lord says, Stand in the courtyard of the Lord's house and speak to all the people of the towns of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. That's verse 2. Now that's talking about us, us Christians, those of us who are coming to worship. Tell them everything I command you. Do not omit a word. Perhaps they will listen and each will turn from their evil ways. Then I will relent and not inflict on them the disaster I was planning because of the evil they have done. Say to them, this is what the Lord says. If you do not listen to me and follow my law, which I have set before you, and if you do not listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I have sent to you again and again, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh and this city a curse among all the nations of the earth. That's that's pretty powerful. That's pretty pretty direct. And again, this this leads back to the Great Commission being a command. Jesus, who has all authority, who is God incarnate, who is the Lord of the universe, who created everything uh, that has been created, is commanding us to. Uh, tell others about him and to teach them to obey everything that he commanded. So this is this is some pretty pretty meaty stuff. And especially when you take a look at the Old Testament uh, verses on that, especially in Jeremiah, it's really not something to be taken lightly. And I think that's the point uh, of this verse. And that's that's another reason why Bible study is so important, because we need to dig in deep. We need to understand what God is trying to tell us. Now, having said all this, I want to add a very small caution about cross-references. Though, though they point to Scripture, they're inferences that are made by commentators and Bible scholars. Remember I said that there were no cross-references in my source for Matthew 28:19. I find it interesting that an internet search for cross-references of Matthew 28, 19 reveals that there are Old Testament and New Testament cross-references for that verse. Uh, Psalm chapter 22, Isaiah 48, Psalm 98, Isaiah 52. Now, I'm not implying that these are not valid, but it helps to explain why different Bible versions may have different cross-references. Sometimes you may follow a cross-reference only to find it doesn't make any sense to you, and that's okay. Uh, when you run into something like that, talk to a fellow Christian, talk to your pastor, ask the questions. Uh, what do you suppose they mean by this? Those, those discussions that we have with each other when we're trying to unpack what the Bible is saying to us are golden. They're valuable. Have you ever had... A brainstorming session in a meeting where the the moderator of the meeting or the leader of the meeting is saying okay this is what we want to do I need ideas and he calls for ideas or she calls for ideas from the rest of the people in the room and you'll hear some ideas that sound really good you'll hear some ideas that you don't quite understand but they don't seem good you'll hear some ideas that you've never thought of before but they kind of make sense see I'm not saying that any of those ideas in this example are not valid. What I'm saying is that by talking to others about what the Bible says to us, we get a deeper understanding. We hear things that, that we may not have thought of before. We get, yeah, I guess there's no better way to say it than a deeper understanding. I only looked at, by the way, in, in this particular talk. I only looked at the Old Testament cross-references. Don't neglect the New Testament cross-references. Matter of fact, you can have a lot of fun with cross-references. You can take a cross-reference back from, from Matthew 28, uh, 20, back to Jeremiah 26, 2, and find cross-references from Jeremiah 26, 2, which, by the way, in my source, links back to Matthew 28, 20. But you can actually follow chains. You can you can get as deep as you want. Uh, cross references are a wonderful tool, and I, I I pray that you'll actually use them. 
One of the reasons why people don't use cross-references is because it's kind of hard to focus that far in on a verse. And I would say that if you're like me and you read a few chapters uh, a day of the Bible, set some aside that you can go over, that you can do the cross-references. Or the next time you're reading something uh, in the Bible and something sticks out to you, go ahead and jot that down and look at it a little bit later. Read the cross-references on that. Maybe read some commentaries on that. Make some notes. Have a discussion with a fellow Christian or with your pastor on that. But anyhow, so cross-references, love them, use them. They'll deepen your understanding. Thanks for your time. God bless you. And Pastor Jeff will be back next week. Thank you very much for your time.